Good morning to everybody here from Colombia. I imagine it's already in the evening in, in Europe, but I want to start my presentation. Escuela Nueva Activa, Quality Education for Equity, Citizenship and 21st Century Skills. First of all, I want to highlight that Escuela Nueva, which means new school in Spanish, is one of the longest bottom-up innovations of the developing world that is still being sustained. It's been for many, many years, and there are many, many reasons for it. But I want to share with you this long story. It's a bit the story also of Cinderella. Uh, necessity is the mother of innovation. And when we started, was precisely with the most vulnerable, invisible schools of Colombia. And since we had to rethink everything, now it's an example of the school of the future. So this is why I say it's a bit the story of Cinderella. And I also, I wanted to highlight that it's one of the longest bottom-up innovations. So I, I always start with this quote, which I think is very inspiring. For more than a hundred years, the lack of school management methods has been the cause of countless complaints, but it has only been in the last 30 years that efforts have been made to find a solution to this problem. And what has resulted, schools continue exactly the same as before. Why is it so inspiring? Because it was Comenius who said this in the year 1600. Here I want to share uh, and I want to, to, to compare with the health system. If we bring a doctor from 100 years ago into a hospital today, that doctor is totally lost. Everything has changed. But if we bring a teacher from 100 years ago into a classroom today, even in an elite school, that teacher is not so lost because everything has changed except the way of learning. So this is what I want. This is my main message behind the Escuela Nueva story. I want to share with you a bit the origin and previous efforts we have made in Latin America. And then I'll share what is Escuela Nueva. And I'll also share what are we doing from the NGO, Fundación Escuela Nueva, that I am founder and director. So let's say Latin America still has problems of quality and in basic education, still many frontal teacher-centered methods, emphasis on memorization and not so much comprehension, incomplete schooling. Now with the COVID situation, uh, we have to redouble our efforts because there will be higher dropout rates and rigid calendars and evaluation systems that expel children from school low academic achievements, low self-esteem of children, and weak school parental relationship and community relationship. Overloaded curriculums, this is crucial, insufficient time for effective learning. Too much time is spent on administrative and planning issues. Untrained teachers in handling these multi-grade schools, which are sort of invisible to many educational planners. And of course, limited amount in the first grades to learning basic skills, lack of appropriate materials. So the bottom line is Latin America has progressed in access and in coverage, but still we have high repetition and dropout rates. And 50% of students in fourth grade do not understand what they read. This is the problem of basic education in Latin America. The origin, we started with the multi-grade schools. This is a publication from the University of London years back saying that precisely learning and teaching in multi-grade settings, it's still invisible. And to most educational planners, uh, they live at the margins of society. And, uh, and on many of these margins, rural and urban multi-grade teaching is involved where one teacher has to handle several grades simultaneously. However, Angela Dilzel from the University of London, who did a study, worldwide study of multi-grade teaching. She says that many of these schools uh, that, that operate at, were invisible to those who plan, manage, and fund education systems. But usually, necessity has been transformed into a positive pedagogy. This is why I say that for us, necessity is the mother of innovation. So what do we say? That to improve the quality of education, it's not just more emphasis on expanding current education systems. More of the same is not enough. And we need a cultural change in the region, a shift from emphasis from transmission of information to an emphasis in comprehension and collective construction of knowledge. 
social construction of knowledge. And we need a new approach to learning, a renovated teaching methods and a new role of the teacher. This we've been talking for almost 40 years, and this is exactly what's happening now uh, necessarily. So from the outset, we had to think systemically. We wanted that Escuela Nueva impact the entire system. In children, we wanted more improved academic skills, self-esteem, social skills and democratic behavior. We've been talking about social emotional learning for many years, improved teaching practices, positive attitude, peer support, peer-to-peer -peer learning, the involvement of parents and communities in the learning process. And of course, we wanted a, a stronger, a, a more supporting relationship between teachers and administrators. So we had to think systemically from the outset, but in the center, we wanted the child, the student, teacher training, school community, administrative and curriculum components, because we wanted to impact national policies, curriculum policies and textbook policies. So we had to rethink the classroom, the learning process and teacher training. So this is what, nothing new in the philosophy of education, Escuela Nueva transforms the conventional uh, way of learning from transmission of information to personalized and cooperative learning. So what is Escuela Nueva Activa? It started as a local innovation in Colombia. It became gradually a national policy and we implemented in more than 20,000 rural schools of Colombia by the end of the 80s. It was basic education we focused and we wanted to address all these factors simultaneously systemically rather than tackling each one in isolation. But we wanted to really think in a systemic and cost-effective way. We had to think that anything we did was viable technically, politically, and financially. We have strong unions, so we have to work with the teachers. And we needed to think of cost-effectiveness. And of course, we wanted to guarantee at that moment access, quality, and relevance of basic education. So what does it promote? As I said, nothing new in the philosophy of education, really child-centered, active participatory and cooperative learning, what the great pedagogues of the starting of century were talking about almost a hundred years ago. Different learning paces, children are not, not necessarily, everybody's learning the same thing at the same time. So it's a flexibility. We had to introduce the concept of handling different learning rhythms in the classroom and flexibility. A new role of the teacher as a mentor, a guide, a facilitator. We've been talking about this for almost 40 years. And this is what it precisely is what's happening now, of course, because of the COVID situation, not a transmitter of instruction only. How we brought the parents into the learning process, uh, rural parents and community to participate in the learning process of children. With the teacher training, we had to try to change the traditional way of teacher training. We are very academic in Latin America. We give them too much theory, but not enough practical hands-on experience. So we wanted the teachers to be trained with the same methodologies that they would be using with their students. The whole concept of democracy, Colombia was the first democracy in Latin America. So we wanted to uh, introduce citizenship active citizenship and democracy in the classrooms to the school governments and a new generation of self-paced, self-directed, reusable learning guides that incorporate both content and methodology. This is very important because we have seen that we uh, teachers don't have the sufficient time for planning everyday lesson plans, especially in a multi-grade setting. So learning guides are crucial because they are, they contain a pedagogical sequence. So they're flexible and personalized methodology that promotes both independent and cooperative work. So children learn to work in small pairs, individual work, in group work through dialogue and interaction, learning corners and, you know, relevance and significant knowledge uh, uh, that they have from their community. Uh, learning corners, what Maria Montessori tried to do in Italy with the elite schools. But all these things are done as quality education for the most vulnerable children of Colombia. Uh, 
resources of community maps so that children and teachers can see who, which child has to walk the farthest away. Our geography is very complicated, so children have to walk long ways to get to schools. So we give to uh, the teachers very specific instruments. So Escuela Nueva generates a new culture of peace and citizenship and allowing boys and girls to learn to learn and participate, empowering them and their communities. Now, behind everything that I say, there is empirical evidence. Just wanted to share you some of those aspects. So let's say many evaluations and studies that have been done on Escuela Nueva, there have been decades of research from UNESCO, from the University of London, from Stanford University, my alma mater, from the World Bank, from the Colombian Institutes of, of Science, National Planning Institute of Colombia. This study was done 20 years ago, the first UNESCO study in Latin America, comparative international study. And here Colombia was like in the middle, but after the implementation of Escuela Nueva, well implemented during that time, Colombia was the only country after Cuba where rural schools outperformed urban schools, except for the mega cities. This is very crucial. So cooperative learning for us, learning through dialogue and interaction initiates positive changes in democratic behaviors, in the skills, values, and attitudes of empathy and peaceful social interaction can be nurtured at school. This is what we want to highlight, citizenship skills. This is a study in Guatemala where, you know, children uh, were having, they take, learn to take turns. It's the children of Escuela Nueva is the blue one, Nueva Escuela Unitaria. Uh, children learn to take turns, to lead processes, to give positive feedback versus negative feedback. You know, bullying is very much uh, weakened and debilitated in Escuela Nueva. There's almost no bullying. Children learn to take turns, to lead processes, to take initiatives. And here is what we, the study we did, and it was published by the University of London. Uh, the way we learn influences the development of our social interactions. So Escuela Nueva students gain awareness and understanding of the power of situations and groups to influence individual behavior. And they develop skills to step up and act and be mindful change agents. Girls' participation is enhanced. Leadership skills are enhanced. So because cooperative learning, we've known through Slavin and through Johnson & Johnson, is cooperative learning, which is central to Escuela Nueva, contributes to eliminate prejudice, stereotypes, and gender biases. Significant conclusions of evaluations from long time ago, uh, the World Bank selected Escuela Nueva as one of the three outstanding reforms in developing countries that had affected successfully a national policy. It was one of the United, uh, the three main achievements of the country, according to United Nations Development Report. And of course, this is a very crucial study, how Escuela Nueva compensates for socioeconomic limitations. When you compare children of Escuela Nueva, of socioeconomic level one, which is the poorest of the poor, with children of socioeconomic level two. So when you compare, uh, Escuela Nueva compensates for uh, social inequality. So the issue, this is why the title of my presentation included the word equity. Here are more significant conclusions. Girls outperform their male classmates, and this is in indigenous populations in Guatemala, because as you know, Escuela Nueva has uh, inspired many educational reforms worldwide, nationally and internationally. These are more studies, significant uh, behaviors of democratic behavior in children, and also even in, 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 in Zambia, uh, the Escuela Nueva teachers were more participatory, more gender sensitive and child centered. So we've inspired many educational uh, reforms internationally. Many countries have come to Colombia to be inspired in Escuela Nueva, uh, but we have had some lessons learned. And also Colombia, like the rest of Latin America, had a huge decentralization process during the last uh, 20 years. And this is good, but during that process, many things have changed. So we have had to learn how to work in a decentralized process. So we have learned that processes must be gradual and well monitored instead of massive and vertical. Bottom up is crucial. We have to take the school as a unit of change. Everybody usually starts decentralizing the ministry, decentralizing the administration, but we wanted to take the school as a unit of change. And something crucial that we have maintained is that have been, there has been permanent evaluation. And we have learned that the children, teachers and the communities have to be the actors of change. 
civil society plays a crucial role. We started as a local innovation, it became a national policy. But then I had to create Fundación Escuela Nueva to help maintain the quality of its implementation and to adapt new and adapt it to new populations. So we have seen that civil society is crucial. Public-private partnerships are crucial. You have to work with governments, but you, have, you need public-private partnerships and the role of civil society for two key words, quality and sustainability. There has been a constant international demand for Escuela Nueva. Uh, that's what so many countries have been visiting Escuela Nueva for many, many years. The systemic approach uh, helped us a lot. At least some, some of the components elements, elements could uh, be more implemented adequately than others. And of course, the unity and the commitment and the passion of my team. We are the same team that have been working together for so many years, both in government and now from civil society. So a bit about our work, about uh, Fundación Escuela Nueva. It's a Colombian NGO that we created precisely after the Escuela Nueva had become a national policy. Once you scale up, then you have to scale down. Uh, we wanted to adapt Escuela Nueva to new contexts and populations, and we wanted to ensure to improve the quality, efficiency, and sustainability of education. So we, are, we have been also classified among the best 100 NGOs according to the global, uh, the, the, the Swiss uh, magazine of NGOs. And uh, based on the Escuela Nueva Activa model and methodology, because Escuela Nueva Activa is both a model and it's a method, participatory methodology. So we provide educational solutions to improve the quality, efficiency, and sustainability. We always want to ensure implementation through monitoring and evaluation strategies and indicators. There's always research behind, and we want to invest in, in research and development to continue innovating and adapting the Escuela Nueva model and methodology to new contexts, populations, and countries. So we have adapted it to urban areas, Escuela Activa Urbana. We have adapted it to displaced migrant population, calling it Escuela Nueva Learning Circles. We've done more research on cooperative learning in Escuela Nueva. Uh, there has been a lot of publication on personalized learning, but not so much in cooperative learning. On peace education in, in, in Escuela Nueva, how, how pedagogical practices can influence peace and development, and of course also indigenous ancestral knowledge that we have also been involved with. We've also been involved with entrepreneurship and financial education, 21st century skills, and now we have Renueva, our online campus and community of practice, which is taking at this moment a very significant role because of the virtuality caused by the COVID. We adapted the Escuela Nueva Learning Circles. This is crucial because we have, initially we started with displaced Colombian children uh, and now we are working with migrants for both Colombian and Venezuelan children. So uh, there was a UNESCO evaluation on our Escuela Nueva learning circles and students scored above the national average in language and math. I mean, just to think that these children that come with all the scars of, of war and of conflict can improve their self-esteem and be beyond the national uh, indicators of in language and math is very significant for us. So at this moment, because of the mandatory quarantine, uh, we have Escuela Nueva Learning Circles at home. So because of the mandatory quarantine, the particular situation of girls, boys, and youth enrolled in, in Escuela Nueva Learning Circles started in March this year. And we've adapted some of the tools of the program to continue the learning process at home. Tutors, pedagogical and psychosocial advisors continuously guide give feedback and evaluate the progress of each student through cell phones because these children do not have connectivity. So what WhatsApp groups have been formed, video, audio, and text messages. And because we, the most important thing for us is that the interaction between tutors, parents, and children is constant to reaffirm ties and bonds. We don't want children to, uh, you know, to loosen their, uh, their affectionate relationship with their teachers. So we've developed also much more about cooperative learning and personalized learning is the essence of Escuela Nueva. This is why you can use these things in another context beyond basic education. And we put it in practice by Fundación Escuela Nueva. 
And of course, peaceful social interaction isn't taught. It is learned together. And this is why we have indicators of how children learn to be much more uh, effective in their social affective domain. And of course, uh, more, more, more relationships, uh, more empathy and, uh, and better human relationships from the classroom. So we've also adapted the methodology of Escuela Nueva in that for entrepreneurship and non-formal context. So we use the Escuela Nueva methodology, not the whole model. For example, to, uh, to train women in El Salvador, as you see in the first thing, to, hand, to learn to handle their money. So here we use the Escuela Nueva participatory methodology, not necessarily the whole model. And of course, it, uh, at this moment, we are implementing our, our, our materials and our training in many non-formal contexts. With indigenous ancestral knowledge, we have studied much more on this and we've made important publications uh, in relation to how we can work with our indigenous populations. Colombia has a rich variety of indigenous populations, but uh, we still, however, it's a 4% population compared to other countries of Latin America. So this is why in Colombia, we don't have so many difficulties in, in different languages as in other countries of Latin America. Here, mainly everybody speaks Spanish. Our virtual campus, Renueva, this is new. We have to have had to strengthen it much more because of the new reality. We adapted our virtual campus, Renueva, uh, our, our series of tools to facilitate and strengthen the processes of Escuela Nueva at home with the Escuela Nueva Activa model. We have tutorial videos. And uh, we're at this moment, we're training uh, more than 2,000 teachers virtually. And for us, this is our first big challenge that we've been having. We invite you to visit our campus. Uh, unfortunately, it's only in Spanish at the moment. Hopefully, in the future, we will have it in English. So I wanted to finalize with, these, with this last part. I saw this new, um, uh, article in El Tiempo, which is our Colombian most uh, well-known newspaper in, uh, in 203. We need individuals who can work in teams, the ability to solve problems, follow instructions, lead processes, meet deadlines, and mostly important working groups. The answer is yes, you have greater chances of getting a job. But precisely our CIS educational systems are not responding to this. Uh, we wanted to, uh, to highlight uh, that what are the 21st century skills are learning. I just, I just wanted to highlight this. Uh, this is in relation to cooperative learning. Francois Tade from the uh, Paris uh, at Paris from Descartes University. He he really wants to put a lot of the elements of Escuela Nueva in many of the aspects he's working with in in Paris. None of us alone is as smart as, as all us together. This is cooperative learning. So the 21st century skills. What are they? Learning to learn. Learning to criticize and accept criticism. Learn to follow instructions and meet deadlines. To have. Uh, to take on complex problems, more critical thinking, to lead processes and take initiatives, to take risks, to communicate ideas using ICTs, and learning how to synthesize information, but most important, to test knowledge and the ability to work in teams. This is what computer, what robots and computers will not do in the future. Uh, Escuela Nueva has reached more than 7 million around the world, mainly through governments, we have worked with governments. Uh, we have had many study missions. Very interesting situation of Vietnam. Vietnam uh, decided to implement the Escuela Nueva in all their territory, in all their rural territory. And there's a very good uh, impact evaluation that already came out of the World Bank in relation to Escuela Nueva in Vietnam. So our work, we want to be a global technical reference for active, cooperative, and personalized learning based on the Escuela Nueva model. We're building a global movement focused on improving the life chances and opportunities of the underserved through quality education that promotes cooperative learning centered on the learner. We have had many publications made abroad. These are just some, but all these books make re reference to uh, Escuela Nueva. Most recently, the, the Washington Post pu published an article uh, less than a month ago and uh, so there has been there has been a lot of international recognition in relation to Escuela Nueva, both nationally and internationally. So as a conclusion, I wanted to keep in mind the, the time. Um, yes, it is possible to improve the quality of education and learning, but more of the same is not enough. It requires a paradigm shift 
And as I said, from transmission of knowledge to social construction of knowledge, we need a more innovative, a systemic approach from the outset. You have to think systemically from the outset. Learning should go beyond academic. This is what we've been talking and doing for so many years. Now everybody's talking about social emotional skills. We've been trying to measure these skills since years back. And of course, technology is very important. Technology can trigger change, but a new pedagogy is indispensable for effective learning. And this is crucial for any level of education, for basic education, secondary education, uh, higher education. Uh, just, I, I would like to quote a friend of mine from Uruguay. He used to say, just introducing computers in the classroom without changing your pedagogics can perpetuate at a higher cost the traditional technique. So this is very important for us because as we know, we have to work with children that do not have any connectivity. You can see a lot of computers full of dust around, but the first thing you have to change is the way of learning. But of course, technology can trigger change. And to reach impact and coverage, you need to work with governments. This is why Escuela Nueva has become a national policy in many countries. But unfortunately, innovations are very vulnerable to political and administrative changes. So we had precisely to incorporate more public-private partnerships in our work and more emphasis on the role of civil society. So I just wanted to highlight this as general conclusions that yes, we can improve quality education, but you need public-private partnerships and the role of civil society for sustainability and quality. Okay, this with this, I finalize. I want to give time for uh, concrete questions. So this is my presentation. I hope that you enjoyed it. And as you can see now, we have had many new challenges from since from the last time that I participated with Iseri and Inter in Valencia. Thank you so very much.